Novas revelações do caso Pedidi. Será que Jay-Z será o próximo a cair? O que Jamie Foxx, Ice Cube e vários outros famosos têm a ver com o caso do Didi? Tudo isso e mais um pouco aqui no canal Rafael Ferpa. Eita preula, eita lasqueira, salve galera, bem-vindos a mais um vídeo do canal Eu vou logo começando com uma história inusitada do Didi Gene Liu, que é o ex-segurança do Didi, trabalhou com o Didi por mais de 10 anos E viu várias das coisas absurdas que o Didi fazia E uma delas é de que ele ia de duas a três vezes por semana em um local para tomar um banho turco E eu fiquei me perguntando o que é um banho turco, eu não sabia o que era até assistir esse vídeo Anu, Aizu Wait outside a Turkish baths for them. You know what they do in the Turkish baths? No, I don't. Oh, you don't? Okay. That's where a lot of gay men meet. And they all take hot baths together. That's a lot of sh that these guys get into when they start having certain meetings with certain people and they meet them at the Turkish bath and they do their meetings and they meet their people in those type of situations where they're comfortable with. So they don't have to worry about uh, their indiscretions coming out. You mean? You understand what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, twice, sometimes, three times a week, me and the driver be outside. He'll run into the Turkish bath. O rapper e ator Ice Cube havia comentado sobre o Didi, mas na verdade ele estava tentando alertar, porque isso que acontece com o caso Didi acontece há anos. Vários outros produtores no meio musical e também de Hollywood já faziam isso. All us or all of them has done the same sh Diddy been doing. They targeting him. They are they gonna make an example out of him. Whatever you do at this point in time, you understand? We gonna crush everything that you got to show the other people behind him. You don't come out and speak up or speak out on us. What Ice Cube was saying, brother, was that it ain't only Diddy. Picked on, targeted, that means there's other people that they know, but they just not gonna say anything about it. You understand? They're not gonna use them right now and put them up on a pedestal and knock them down like they do in Diddy. If Diddy hadn't done anything, if Diddy wasn't involved in anything, ain't nothing they could do to you. They could come at you, but if you got enough money like he had enough money, whatever they say, the, Lies don't stand, bro. The truth stand. So Ice Cube saying that, I was a little disappointed. But what he was actually letting y'all know was this. Essa que vocês estão vendo aí na tela se chama Jennifer Hudson. Quem é ela? Ela é uma cantora americana que foi descoberta pelo Clive Davis. Quem que é o Clive Davis? Ele é o antecessor do Didi. É o cara que ensinou tudo pro Didi. Tudo que o Didi faz hoje em dia, ele aprendeu com o Clive Davis, um produtor das antigas. E segundo a cantora Jaguar, que está denunciando todo mundo, essa Jennifer acabou sacrificando sua própria família, fazendo um pacto para ter fama. Coincidência ou não, assim que apagaram a família dela, ela decolou na carreira. Cause I'm sick and tired of a bitch who was willing to sacrifice her own family and everybody think she great. Like now that I'm starting to see, cause I never really paid too much attention because I know that she was selected to try to replace me in some way. Um, so I never really spent a lot of time focusing on her because I knew she was a plant. But when I look at the predatory way that she was looking for the same kind of relationship with Clive Davis as Whitney Houston had, I said, oh, 
Whitney Houston fame, that's big fame. Damn. Just your mama and, and the baby, and you can be Whitney Houston too. And then when I see her on the Clyde, her and Clive on the red carpet and somebody asked her about Clive and she said, Clive is my everything. I'd be nothing without Clive. And then it makes you think about the first Whitney Houston tribute when she was really trying her hardest to look like Whitney Houston. I never really thought about it. If she was willing to fucking sacrifice Whitney Houston so she could be a bad talk show host. Jack, so to play devil's advocate, for those that say Jaguar Wright is jealous of their careers. Why would I be jealous of sacrificing people and accepting false accolades for shit that I didn't earn? E esse que vocês estão vendo na tela é o William Balfour. Quem é ele? É o acusado de ter apagado a família da Jennifer, que está cumprindo prisão perpétua. Mas ele afirmou que é completamente inocente e que armaram para ele. And then her. You wanted her dead, didn't you? No. Not at all. We wasn't even in a relationship anymore. You told people that you wanted her dead, didn't you? That never occurred. Them my whole allegations. You, you never said it? No. Never, not one time. E as suspeitas é de que a própria Jennifer armou para ele, sacrificou sua família para ter fama. O ator Jamie Foxx, esse que vocês estão vendo, o astro Jamie Foxx, supostamente afirmou que Sean Diddy Combs foi o responsável pelo seu colapso, foi responsável pelo colapso de sua saúde em abril de 2023. Na época, o artista preocupou os fãs ao passar por uma emergência grave. No entanto, o que realmente aconteceu ainda não foi revelado pelo ator e tudo será explicado em breve. Com a produção de What Had Happened Was, da Netflix. Netflix. E quem que comentou sobre o caso do Jamie Foxx e o Didi foi um produtor muito famoso chamado Choke no Joke. Esse que vocês estão vendo na tela disse que estava presente enquanto o Jamie Foxx estava fazendo as gravações. Quando o Didi apareceu do nada, oh, foi lá e tum, provavelmente deu uma bebida batizada para ele. Surgiu um áudio muito estranho e aparenta ser verdadeiro de uma ligação que o Didi fez de dentro da prisão. A voz realmente parece ser do Didi. Ele queria, na verdade, apagar as evidências que seriam as supostas caixas de pizzas, que poderiam ser gravações, fitas de vídeo, ou vai lá saber o que era que podia incriminar ele ainda mais. E aparentemente o Jay-Z abandonou ele lá dentro. E dizem que esse áudio vazou porque um segurança gravou ali o telefonema do Didi. Nah, Bob, he ghosted. This motherfucker doing. 
Hell no. Hey, yo, check this out. Need you to reach out to the producer. Let these motherfuckers know there's a release date for that new Netflix movie. I, Bob, uh, it's just, it's just crazy right now. Everybody out there quiet as a motherfucker, huh? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We gonna let them have their little fun, but I'm still gonna have them last laugh. What about all these lawsuits, though, Bob? Ain't none of them getting shit. Yeah, I ain't worth nothing. Ain't got shit in my name anyway. Don't even worry about it. But your money hungry and shit and shit. Uh, just to say, what should he do about his whip, though? Man, the fuck is you talking about? You don't see the shit I'm dealing with right now? You make some money, you 30 years old and shit. Pay your own fucking car. Hey, I told him to drop some music. I'm about to drop a new track this week. Everybody gonna want to hear my shit. Preste muita atenção nessa mulher que está aparecendo aí na tela para vocês, é a Dina. Quem é ela? Ela é uma ex do Didi que ficou com o Didi ao mesmo tempo que ele namorava com a Cassie. Para quem não conhece a Cassie, foi aquela que deu o escândalo do hotel. E ela também acusou o Didi de ter sofrido vários abusos psicológicos e também físicos. Puff did some things to some powerful people that they're calling in their friends and everything and everybody's taking their hands off of him so now he's no longer the altar boy and he's not in their club anymore it was a girl that came out cam two and a half years before cassie came out and went on a major platform and told him how he was kicking her beating her and made her get rid of two kids a girl named Gina came out on a major platform that he was dating that she had texts from Cassie and her and Cassie was texting each other back and forth and Cassie was saying I don't hate you I know how he is and they was talking about each other and talking to each other She came out two years ago. So you tell me, Cam, why didn't nobody take her case? It was like mentally, emotionally, and physically abusing me. Did he? Mm-hmm. It's not the first time we've heard that. Mm -hmm. um, there was an incident, of course, with Cassie, where reporters are saying that the police were called because they got into an altercation. This, I think it was like two or three years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Um, tell me some of the things that he would say to you. Um, he would always compare me to Cassie and tell me that I'm the bad one and she's a good one. Um, and he was with both of you guys at the same time. Yeah. How did you find out about that Cassie knowing about you because she um reached out to me oh she did mm -hmm. what did she say um on Instagram or just no text? text okay um basically she just said to just leave him alone okay but then but she reached out to me like a few times after that she had no lawyers or nobody that was interested in going through that battle and that long drawn out court battle that they had to file papers, they had to do that two, three years ago, two, three years down the road, she ain't coming up with a dime. Cassie had the lawyers and the people who put the money behind the lawyers to make sure that her case was clam tight so she could win. You don't get those type of lawyers, man, without somebody putting some money behind you. Those were lawyers that had won major cases. Eita, lasqueira, é isso, galera. Espero que vocês tenham curtido o vídeo de hoje. Se curtiu, deixa o like aqui embaixo. Deixa a sua inscrição, que isso é importante, hein? Quem quiser a parte 15 já, nossa senhora, já tá na parte 15. Deixa aqui embaixo também, eu quero a parte 15. Porque aí eu vou ficar bem animado pra fazer a próxima parte. Que Deus abençoe vocês e a família de vocês. Se inscreva no canal Rafael Ferpa. Eu vou deixar aquele grande abraço. É nóis.